Doing the repairs here I thought was a brilliant idea because here's where they have all the parts. But that was about a month ago and we really didn't plan on all this weather. But I think history has shown that for every good resurrection, I mean, you do have to suffer a little bit. I can't get this off. Is the parking brake on? This Yamaha Phaser is owned by Jeremy Gerard, who you might recognize from past STV episodes. He works for Kimpax and has appeared on STV telling us about their products. And he was the guy we approached when we had the idea to rebuild a snowmobile, knowing we wanted to bring Kimpax in to help out with the project. Right away he was in. He even said he had the perfect sled, a 1999 Yamaha Phaser he picked up for cheap, but that needed work. So that's when I had the idea to bring the sled here to the parts so that when we discovered new problems, we could just go to that building over there and get whatever we needed. So at this point, we got tents, we got tools, we got the sled, we got a list. We got a lot more room on our list for more stuff that we we're gonna find. So I guess we're pretty much ready to go. We've got two days to complete the repairs on the phaser, which when you bring in shooting the story for TV part of it is a pretty tight timeline, especially considering we never even tried to get the sled running before we got here and that it's been sitting under a tarp for close to a decade. We do have a basic list of parts we'll need and because we're at Kimpex, if we need anything we haven't planned on, new parts are literally right next door. Now making things interesting is the fact that we have to do these repairs outside. There's just no room to do the work inside here at the Kimpex facility in case you were wondering about that. The list of stuff to do on the phaser includes a complete rebuild on the front and rear suspensions. That includes trailing arms, radius arms, bushings and bearings. Plus, we'll get as deep into this machine as changing out the pistons for a top end refresher. But I'm sure we'll find even more as we dig into this project. I got stuff falling out of the back of the machine on this side. Hey Jeremy. Yeah. Are you okay if I get rid of the uh, Fabrico homeowner trailer hitch on this? Sounds like a plan. I, I kind of agree. Repairing sleds in the Kimpex parking lot isn't a service they normally offer up to their customers. Instead, Kimpex sells parts direct to dealers, and then on to you where you have the choice to work on your sled at home, hopefully in a warm workshop, or have your dealer complete the repairs. Now there is an online option where you can search out your own parts and buy direct with shipping to your home. One cool aspect of this online ordering is how Kimpex includes your dealer. Just click on the dealer you wish to support in your area and they get credit for the sale along with the profit for that sale as if purchased through their store, even though they never even touch the parts that are shipped directly to you. I think maybe we should get the right parts before we get stuff torn too far apart. Well, you put a list in, right? So we know we have some stuff. You wanna go see if they pulled that? Sure. Okay, you, you go, I'll, I'll keep going on this. Sounds good, I'll right. go grab the parts. Okay, see you in a bit. That should get us started. Do we know what's in there? No, we don't. It's like what, Christmas. Gonna, it's like Christmas, exactly. I'll get a knife. Oh, that's uh, it's looking oh, pretty promising. Shocks. There's a gasket set. Yeah, look at that. Ultimax belts, all kinds of clips. Look at that stuff. Take these off so I can. I just want to make sure your hands are sopping wet too. Definitely I'm, I, are. I'm hoping they're wet. By the looks of it, Kimpex has almost everything to rebuild this thing from one end to the other. So, Jeremy, when it comes to you know things like uh, these radius rods and, and bushings and stuff, do you guys make all this stuff here? Or is this all sourced from who knows where? Kimpex manufactures quite a bit uh, in Canada. Um, just up the road here, we have uh, we have three different plants. Cut a ball in this neck of the woods. Yeah, so. that's cool. This would be much worse if it was cold and miserable. <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Just watch your fingers. Yep. Excellent. So he was saying, ah. 
Didn't feel a thing over here. I didn't feel anything. So far, so good. A couple Excellent. things that we've got stumbling blocks on, those uh, bushings for the, the trailing arms, but we've got a, so a solution for that coming. So. Go figure. It's easy to find the parts here for some reason, and everything else is looking good, so. Awesome. All right, I guess we got the front radius rods on. We're, yep. uh, we're on to putting the shocks in. We're winning right now. We are. All right, well, I can pull apart let's, the chain yeah. case. Yeah, let's do that. All right. So no chunks in the uh, chain case. Definitely water in there though. There's some like white slime in the bottom. Shh, don't tell anybody. We're having a small environmental disaster in the parking lot. But I put absorbent on it, so we're good. Oop. If I was a 14 millimeter wrench, where oh, would I be? I would probably be over here. Right, right over here. Getting used by me. I'm gonna steal it and give it back to you in a sec. Brake Clean cleans a sled good. Ah, the smell of Brake Clean in the afternoon. Huh, detailed, done. So we got radius rods, tie rods we didn't do. What else do we have done on this? Trailing arms, yeah, we got the new trailing arms. What did we change something else in the front? Oh, do we have shocks on the list? No, let's, we didn't. Let's, let's add shocks. And cross it off right away. Perfect. Makes it look like we're getting more accomplished that way. That's right. Perfect. So what we got here is the, the Kimpex Rush Ski, which is a universal fit ski that will fit almost any snowmobile from 1990 and, and later. Do you think they would fit a Polaris Dragon? They definitely would fit a Polaris Dragon. I need a set of those for a Polaris Dragon. Perfect. Woohoo! We're rocking. That, that's tight. And there we go. That's a suspension. Do we got a sawzall? The also known as the track removing tool. You got it. Have one of those? I think we may have to call Kimpex for some stud uh, tunnel protectors. Oh yeah. The hockey sticks. Well, those are hockey sticks. Just ain't cutting it. Look at those are actual hockey sticks. Uh, hang on a sec. See, there's two sides <laughs> of, a, of a blade. See, there's the side with the teeth on it. That generally is the side that does the cutting. Just, just, just throwing it out there. It's not always the case, but. There we go, Jeff. That's how a you job remove well a done. That's how you remove a track. Again, a little persuasion and we got her done. Did that come out? We did. I don't think we need that at all. That's that's filed away. That's <laughs> that's solved. We no longer need a nidler wheel in that location. So today went pretty good. It was could have been way worse, but I mean at this point in the day it's not bad to be out here and still not freezing our giblets off. Um, so. Anyway, so they're gonna overnight parts from Oh, that building. Across the road. <laughs> so we'll be ready to go in the morning and we'll be back at them. Right Day on. one's done and we're almost on schedule. Yeah, we're pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. Relatively close. Close enough. Well, we're back for day two on the phaser build, which we still haven't come up with a funky name yet for it, but it might be the hazer, we're not sure. Uh, anyways, it's a good night last night. It's time to get out of tomorrow. We got a big list of stuff to get through by the end of the day today, because you're leaving. You got it, and so we're, we better get at it. Yeah, um, first things first, we'll get the track in. We're still waiting for a couple of bits for this thing that should be delivered this morning, magically from over there. Perfect. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll start on the motor while we're waiting for whatever we need for that. Right on, let's right. get going. Oh. An air chisel is a wonderful tool. 
I don't have my air chisel. Slamming two pieces of hardened metal together has never resulted in an injury in the past, I don't think. Ow! I was feeling the knuckles this morning from that shock yesterday when I took the shock to the fingers. Oh. This is a pain in the butt. Good job, Jeff. We win. Done. My whacking arm's getting a little tired right now. <laughs> About an inch, slow down, whoop, whoop, perfect, going, and good. Look at that, super clean, not. I love the fact that we never even attempted to start this thing before we put like $2,500 of parts on it. <laughs> this has been specially modified to put gear oil in just about anything that's, uh, where gravity's not working for you, so. Hopefully it'll work. It'll probably spill out everywhere. Just fill it up until it comes out the uh, the dipstick uh, tube, right? <laughs> well, that all depends on the dipstick operating me. <laughs> oh, there's definitely a dipstick operating. Are you working on an airbox? I think I'm working on an airbox. Oh, I think there might be a nest in there. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that stuff should not be in the carbs. That was not a setup. That junk is actually in there. And oh, just looking at the... Uh, is there a squirrel in there? In the, in the air box, I think uh, either mice or squirrels have decided to make it their new home. So... I think it was a wise decision we didn't try to run this thing without taking it apart first. That, that could have been catastrophic. Le legitimate neglect, that's what it is. That's... Can't fake that neglect. That is a project on its own. One of the big concerns is making sure we get no debris down in that bottom end. I think we need to make a sea dew show and start rebuilding sea dews in the parking lot by the beach. I'll volunteer to help for those. Two as long as you're not in a Speedo. <laughs> You got the arrow pointed towards the front? I got the arrow pointing towards the front. It's a good thing. Get on the way out of here. There we go. There we go. That's a piston and a bore. All right. That's one. That's one. There we go. That's like it's supposed to go. We're in. You did put the base gasket in, eh? Base gasket. <laughs> so we got spark. We got the motor back together. Got carbs on. Exhaust is on. Got to deal with the tank and the rear suspension and the seat at a later date, but I'm hungry. I think that's a great idea. I think it's time for lunch. Lunch time it is. Lunch. All right, well, I think our parts should be ready over at uh, shipping there, so I'm gonna go pick them up and I'll be back. Right on. I'm gonna finish up with the last few pieces here in the suspension and then we're ready to put it back in. Cool. Well, I'll travel over to that building. We've See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Salut Bruno. Salut. I'm here for my parts. Yes. So uh, you want to go inside and find them? I want to go inside. All right. I'll, I'll show it to you. Okay. Cool. I got parts. Did you get parts or did you come back with Bernice's phone number from the warehouse? What well, took so long? Well, I got that too, but I got parts. This is the handiest thing ever. You just go over there and there's like thousands of parts. Well, like, yeah. If you need a parts, like you go there. I'm not sure if we need all these parts. I know we needed this shaft. I'm going to give you the shaft. 
I also got heated hand warmers because that's very important at this point and a new windshield. Awesome. There's nothing really to do with getting that thing running, but this is important. We need that. Well, let's get that together. All right. So we're going to leave the hockey sticks in there? I think we made the decision to I, leave the hockey sticks in there. I think the hockey sticks are just fine. It's very Canadian. Very Canadian, eh? You watch guys that do this all the time, and they make it look so easy. She's my dumb piece, treasure trove. It'll take my whole life. There, there we that's, go. That's in. Uh, grips are here. So we're replacing the original factory ones with some Kimpex ones. So, are we doing this with the instructions? No. Instructions? I think you just hook up two wires and go, right? I don't think we need any of that stuff, do we? Hmm. Not that this is super important right now, but I'm putting it on anyways. Now, does this? You know, just putting a windshield on this thing makes it look so much better. I mean, that old yellow crappy one is making it look rather used. Yep. What kind of belt are you using there, Jeff? This would be a Ultimax Pro. Made in USA in a state called Missouri. We were there a couple weeks ago. The original uh, Original belt plant. plant. You know, that place is super cool. Clean carbs done, pistons done, carb boots, throttle cable, windshield, track we did, ignition switch, we didn't do that, that's done. So you gotta do that yet. That's not gonna happen here. Seat cover's not gonna happen here. Okay, so we got a couple of wins and fails. Basically, everything's pretty much a win, but we do have a fail on the seat cover. Uh, the new one needs a like an, an upholstery stapler yep. to, to be put on properly. Done. So. We're gonna run with the old seat for right now and just kind of rock that, and Jeremy's gonna change that out at home. We are, however, at the 11th hour, and we still have not got it running. Still gotta pump the so, tank out because there's basically turpentine in there right now. They're coming with a pump, but we got spark, so that's good. But really, we have everything else is kind of an unknown, so we've got this sort of sled that's ready to go, but still has not run. Yeah. I remember these days. Yeah, turn and hanging ham off the inside. When you feel somebody there we have a pump. We have a pump. We have a pump. Awesome. Let's get a pump going. This is uh, a this product is Terra pump called the Terra pump. It runs on uh, four AA batteries. Yeah. Um, you just drop it down into the tank and. Can we just uh, pour this in your truck so we can use it up? <laughs> No, thank you. No, you sure? I mean, you've got that mighty Dodge over there. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it can ram it through the fuel system. It's alive! Look at the crap coming out of it. This is the proper way of seating new rings, by the way. Are we on the gas now? I think we're on the gas now. No, no. Oh boy. Hang on. Well. Back her on out, take her for a trip. I think, go get your helmet. I'm gonna let you do the honors. At the end of our two days, I've concluded repairing a sled in a nice warm garage is much better. And I don't think Kimpex wants a lineup of lads fixing their derelict old rides in their parking lot anyways. But this was meant as a challenge and something a little different from what we normally do on STV. And in that regard, I think we've got a win.
it was great to bring back a sled from the dead because let's face it we installed about i don't know three grand worth of parts on a sled that's still only worth around two so essentially we polished a turd here but if we hadn't done this rebuild this sled would have been parted out or sent for scrap and that would have been a shame because even though it's just a phaser these sleds and others like it were a load of fun back in the day and with a little work and some kimpex parts there's no reason that sleds like this couldn't be a load of fun today either until next time on STV, I hope you can get that old iron out of storage because it's a bunch of fun to wrench on, and if you're successful, you too can ride off in a cloud of two-stroke smoke.